The absolute balls on Capcom opening State of Play with the release date for this game? Oh my god. I'm glad that Capcom understands that we all knew this game was coming due to a variety of leaks and rumors going around. So why beat around the bush? Here's the release date and here's the title. RE4 Remake is coming. I never imagined I'd see RE4, of all games, revealing itself with a classy flamenco guitar. It's so badass. So yeah guys, here we are. It's real. Even though this trailer is about a minute and a half long, I have so much to say about it. I'm very excited to get into it, so let's not waste any more time. Let's return to the village in RE4 Remake. So our trailer begins with a very quick collection of shots actually showing Leon in President Graham's office. This is something we've never gotten out of the original RE4 that I've always wanted to see. We only get Leon interacting with his government contacts in supplemental material, like Darkseid Chronicles, and the recent Netflix show, Infinite Darkness. Right away, this is such a good sign, because it means the story of this reimagining will probably be a lot deeper. I wonder if this scene will be part of the opening monologue Leon does in OG RE4. It'd make for a much more interesting montage instead of using previous titles cutscenes to illustrate Umbrella's downfall. I know a lot of fans really hate how Umbrella died off screen, but I'm hoping this new opening montage makes that downfall a lot clearer and more engaging. I hope we get to see Leon in training mode, or going through some early missions akin to Darkseid Chronicles Operation Javier. If you look really closely at this one shot, you can see someone else following Leon into the Oval Office. I bet that's Krauser. Before we see any of this, we get to hear Leon's and what I assume to be his operator's call signs, Condor 1 and Roost. I'm pretty certain Roost is the codename Hunnigan is going by. We don't get to see her at all in this trailer, but I personally think it's safe to assume that this is what's going on. It makes sense too from a tactical espionage perspective. It's a lot safer using codenames in case someone jacks the line. We also get to hear what Leon is calling Ashley, Baby Eagle. Oh my god, I don't know why that's so funny to me. Speaking of the Baby Eagle, the next collection of shots show more of Leon, but also Ashley. At first glance, she might look a lot different, but her outfit is very similar to her original. With her new blazer on, she really looks like her Beta 3.5 design. If we pause and please forgive the very bad looking hair and static facial expression, I imagine all of this is still early footage from months ago, you can see under her blazer. She's wearing her classic orange turtleneck sweater. She's still got her scarf and skirt, which thank the lord she isn't wearing a pair of jeans. But this time she also has leggings on, which makes perfect sense, because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be the winter when this game takes place. It also calls back to her 3.5 design. But yeah, no more endless upskirts for this poor girl. The Ashley shots see her running away from something, and from what I can tell, I believe this could be a new playable section for her. I'm going out on a limb here, but I think it's going to be at the start of the game or close to it, judging by how we see her at the main village's entrance. I think this is going to be an extended scenario, much like the redone Sherry and Ada levels in RE2R. Next up, we see Leon approaching the very first Ganado's house at the start of the game, and yeah, RE4 is totally getting the RE engine treatment. By the way, Leon's baggier bomber jacket and cargo pants are a complete one-to-one -one recreation of his Beta 3.5 outfit, which I personally love to see. If you've played all of the recent RE Engine games, you're likely familiar with how Capcom absolutely crams its environments filled with junk and clutter objects, making the levels feel often like they've been forgotten to time or like disaster zones. They feel generally lived in and more believable. All of the random objects and hunting equipment outside of the house suggest a few things to me. Firstly, we see a hammer, machete, and what looks like a shovel. These are definitely going to be Ganado weapons. There are also a few bear traps, which to me confirms Huey for RE4R, and I'm so excited to see him in all of his photorealistic pure white German Shepherd glory. We see Leon entering the house, and this time the door is closed. We see inside the house, and in this game it seems like the first Ganado, Don Jose, look at him, oh my god he's horrifying, is way more monstrous this time. The villagers in the original RE4 looked relatively normal throughout the whole game, and it seems like now the Plaga infecting them has a very distinct visual presence. The eyes in particular are already bloodshot. There are a few shots of the main village area, and they look perfect. 
My friend October actually made diagrams laying out where each of the original buildings are, and they're exactly where they were in the original game. It's extremely faithful. There's a quick shot of Leon looking at the pyre in the middle of town, where the officer is staked up. We can't see him fully, but we do see his feet dangling off screen. I'm sure now that this game is photo real and much more grounded, he probably won't be too recognizable. We see skulls hanging over top of the entrance to the building hiding the secret underground route to the church. I figured this out because the very recognizable door can be seen in the lower half of this image. There's also a shot of the church itself where Ashley is being held, and again, it looks very similar to its OG counterpart, with the family headstones in the graveyard out front, the gate this time is closed again, and the bell tower is visible just off screen. One of the biggest moments for me in this trailer is we get a pretty clear shot of the village chief, Bitores Mendez, the big cheese himself. And this time he has a little hat on. He's giving very strong Mr. X vibes in this shot with his imposing stance and hat. It's funny because in the original RE4, Mendez was an evolution of the original Mr. X tyrant in his design, with his height, bald head, and trench coat. It's cool seeing this remake version of Mendez also being an evolution of the remake version of Mr. X. Whether or not Mendez returns as just a boss or a pursuer is up in the air still. I'd be okay with both ideas, but I think I prefer him staying as a boss fight. On the topic of bosses, there's a shot of Leon passed out in the boat that we used to cross Del Lago's domain. I'm surprised they even showed this, but I'm glad they did because they basically confirmed two original bosses coming back. Can I just say I love love how green the water is. The entire game looks very colorful compared to the original's very brown and gray color palette. It's a change in tone I like a lot more. Right after this shot, we see Leon suffering in the cabin, having that nightmare hallucination of being completely infected. I really hope this game explores the inner struggle Leon's having against the parasite growing within him, as much as it illustrates the outer struggle, him fighting against the cult. One of my favorite visual tropes in video games is when a character has an infection timer, so to say. Something that represents a change that is visually represented on their physical appearance. We got a little bit of that in the classic RE4 through a few cutscenes, but I'm hoping by the end of this game, Leon is barely hanging on. The parasite almost fully corrupting him. Red eyes, pale skin, veins popping out of his face. Can you imagine even having like reduced maximum HP during some of the late game encounters? It would make the Plaga removal scene that much more impactful, seeing his skin tone, eyes, and early gameplay stats returning to normal. Having that heroic reprise in his final battle against Sadler. His mind control tricks aren't gonna work this time. Anyway, my fanfiction aside, this is all a great sign. It seems like mostly everything from the village section will return for this remake. Let's hope the castle and island get the same amount of love. Speaking of the castle, we get a few glimpses of it in this teaser, and what's presented is pretty exciting. Firstly, we see an area that I'm having trouble identifying. It kind of reminds me of the village's church, with the various pews and altar, but there are new doors to the sides of the altar. We see a cultist standing in front of the altar, and at first I thought this was a female Ganado, but in the next shot, a group of zealots can be seen walking down a castle corridor. They look perfect. The cultists in the original RE4 were very weird. They all had pristine robes and shoes on. The only real gruesome detail about their designs was the pale skin and boiled flesh of some of the later high-ranking zealots. Here, the basic black-robed cultists are very zombie-like, with bare feet and tattered clothes. It reminds me of some of the guys from RE1. If you look at their necks, it seems like the Plaga are almost bulging out already pre-mutation. This is such a cool detail because it makes it feel like the Zealot's infection is way worse than that of the villagers. It's still gonna be that we're getting the upgraded Plaga forms as we progress through the game, but better visually represented to the player. One of the most notable things is the re-reveal of the other two iconic RE4 main characters, Luis Serra and Ada Wong. Luis's new design is great. His 16th century explorer look is now modernized. His decorative vest is now a cool leather jacket, and he's still sporting the Red 9 pistol. I feel like this shot is very intentional since a majority of RE4 fans love this gun. Capcom's like, look guys, it's in the game still. Luis's dialogue is very interesting here. He says, Guess you, me. Big the wrong spot to vacation, eh? If I had to guess, this is when him and Leon are tied up right before they split up. 
I'm really excited to see Luis's full look and how he'll factor into the story this time around. I have a feeling he's going to play a much larger role. I'd love to see him actually helping Leon in the castle, instead of showing up to tell you he dropped something, and then awkwardly leaving again. From this one shot, it does look like he's in the castle, so let's hope. Ada is back, and she has a new outfit. It's hard to tell exactly what she's wearing, but it seems like a sweater dress to me. I don't think they'll get rid of her dress design in this game, because it's just too iconic to her character. I think they'll make it more practical, because it's winter. You gotta have thicker layers out there, you know? She looks good from this angle, but interestingly enough, the room she's in is the same room that Leon and Ada meet for the first time in the original game. That one room overlooking the hedge maze, if you remember. I think Ada's mostly gonna do the same things she did in the original without much change. I don't know, I just get the feeling Ada won't have a lot of new direction, purely based on her not needing it. She served her purpose in the original main game and separate ways perfectly. It's still up in the air whether or not we'll even get her playable campaign in this remake, but I really hope we do. Before the trailer ends, we hear and see Sadler, the big bad. The opening shot shows an altar with a unique design etched into it. Blood is dripping down from off screen. I think this symbol might be another depiction of the Los Illuminados logo. I'm pretty sure this altar thing is where Ada almost gets sacrificed in separate ways. By the way, Sadler looks perfect. He's still got his intricate hooded robe design and his living organic staff that he uses to control the minds of infected cultists. We see him raising his hands towards the camera as a Plaga tentacle shoots out of his wrist. I wonder if this is where Leon gets infected after meeting up with Luis. I bet if Luis still dies in the same spot, he'll no longer suffer the wrath of Sadler's demonic appendage, if you know what I mean. I think he'll get the wrist of tentacles through his chest this time. The final thing we see before the trailer ends is a quick taste of the original intro cutscene of Leon driving into the village with his police escort. He's looking at a beautiful updated photo of Ashley and speaking the words... If I could just forget what happened that night. Pain. Even for a second. This time, it can be different. It has to. Leon's clearly referring to the Raccoon City incident here, and the pain of not being able to save the victims affected. I think Ada is a big part of that particular statement. Finding and saving Ashley will be the redemption that Leon needs to get over his past and pain. Well, that's what he thinks in this moment, at least. I really like this darker take on Leon and his story. Using his trauma from surviving Raccoon City and not being able to save Ada is gonna make for quite the reveal when he discovers her in the castle. This right here is the kind of storytelling I've always wanted out of the original RE4. I love the idea of the dark blue tone of 3.5. It seemed like a horror game to me back then, and it feels like we're gonna get some of that seriousness back in this remake. I never liked how Leon barely reacted to seeing Ada in the castle. It's like he found out she survived Raccoon City off-screen. And how does he even know who Wesker is, let alone that Ada is working for him? So yeah, I'm really happy with basically everything presented in this teaser trailer. I'm super excited to hopefully see a more dark and grounded version of RE4 that takes itself a little more seriously than the original. Do I still want Leon to be confident and spit out one-liners here and there? Of course I do. I just hope that the story overall makes more sense. I think grounding RE4's action horror gameplay in a believable dark and scary landscape will work wonders. Now that we've wrapped up the trailer, let me tell you about some of my hopes and wishes for this title's gameplay. Sadly, we don't get to see any combat in this teaser, but there are real-time scenes of Leon walking towards the main village area. There's a pretty awesome shot of Leon trekking through the brush, and the cinematic way in which this camera angle is set suggests that Leon's somewhere deep in the woods. I can't really identify where this is from the original game, but I think that's a good sign. One thing I hope they achieve with this title is making the areas at least feel larger than OG RE4, kinda giving RE4 the RE1 remake treatment, if you will. Have all of those same areas just tweaked ever so slightly. What's really cool is it seems like when Leon gets to the village, it's early in the morning, judging by how dark it is when he investigates the first Ganado house. 
When we see him arriving in the main town square, the sun is out like in the original game, it feels like we'll get to see the passage of time better throughout the various levels. A really small detail that I noticed at the very end of the trailer when Leon approaches the entrance to the main village is that he's walking with his gun at the ready, the silver ghost by the way, you can totally see it, but as he approaches the main gate, he lowers his pistol. I noticed that he also does this at the starting house. What I think is going on here are real-time Hunnigan calls. You get calls from Hunnigan at these exact spots in the original game. This is something I've always dreamed of for RE4. Having those codec calls play without taking you out of the gameplay experience would be so sick. If you remember, RE2 and 3R had real-time radio calls, so I imagine they'll do something similar for RE4R. I even put together a mock-up using the original GameCube RE4 as an example. Check it out. Leon, I hope you can hear me. I'm Ingrid Hunnigan. I'll be your support on this mission. Loud and clear. Somehow I thought you'd be a little older. So the subject's name's Ashley Graham, right? That's right. She's the daughter of the president. So try to behave yourself, okay? <laughs> Whoever this group is, they sure picked the wrong girl to kidnap. I'll try to find some more information on my end as well. Good. Talk to you later. Leon out. RE Village was more action-oriented than RE7, 2R, and even RE3 R. RE4 is a straight-up action game that has a lot in common with Village, the same inventory system, weapon and stat upgrades, treasures, and general hordes of enemies that all attack you at once. I'm sure all of that stuff will come back in RE4 R, but I'm hoping that the normal difficulty setting will be a bit harder. I found Village's standard and hardcore modes unchallenging for the most part, and its extreme meme mode Village of Shadows was just too hard. I hope that RE4R's standard difficulty strikes a good balance between Village's hardcore and VOS. Difficulty aside, I hope we get all of the unlockable costumes and guns, plus more. For the love of god, please put the mercenaries mode from RE4 and 5 in this game. I want to play as all of those original characters, plus Luis. He deserves to be a playable mercenary. That falsely advertised mercenaries mode in Village it just sucked. I'm sure Leon's iconic roundhouse kicks and suplex will make a return, but one thing I hope gets modernized are the ways you deal with grounded enemies. I can't tell you how frustrating it is after like 17 years of replaying RE4, having to slowly knife an enemy while they're laying on the ground can really be. I hope we get downed enemy attacks like RE5's stomps and knife kills. Quick time events are something that is so integral and tied to the identity of classic RE4 that I couldn't imagine a world where they don't appear in its remake. I feel like QTEs will only be special occurrences in this game. Like maybe when a boss enemy grabs you, you can break free, instead of using defensive weapons like RE2R. I'm not saying I want every enemy grab to be a QTE, but I think it would be cool if they only happened during boss fights and maybe during the end of certain cutscenes. If it's still in the game, I want the Krauser knife fight to be all QTEs just like before. The biggest surprise about this trailer is that RE4R on PS5 will have PSVR2 support, so we're literally getting another RE4 VR. How weird is that? After RE4R was announced, we get to see a bonus trailer for Village VR, and to my surprise, the game is literally a copy of Oculus's RE4 VR. I don't think that's a bad thing, by the way. I'm very excited for that. Dual wielding, enemies right in your face, and being able to examine every single item up close just in Resident Evil Village. I'm sure the PS VR 2 version of RE4 Remake will play like this, and it's gonna be awesome. I just know it. Something important we have to discuss are the worries and doubts that came with RE3 Remake. According to the game's press release, RE4R is being developed by the team that brought us RE2R, Dev1. This is great because as we all know, M2, the developers of RE3R, won't be involved here. If you don't know, Dev1 have been responsible for RE7, RE2R, DMC5, and Village, which probably means that half of the original RE4 won't be missing in this remake. That doesn't exclude the possibilities of cuts or redesigns, but I don't think it'll be another RE3R situation. I personally wouldn't mind if things like the Salazar Gundam or the Fire-Breathing Stone Dragons got cut, or, you know, like, half the island. <laughs> 
Seriously, when the game just becomes guys shooting at you, RE4's quality drops significantly. I think based on this teaser trailer alone, with its dark and grounded aesthetic, we probably won't get things like the Salazar robot. I'm sure every character is going to show up as well, like Krauser, Hunnigan, and even Wesker. I'm sure those characters, including Ashley and Luis, will also have better stories and characterizations this time around too. It seems like upgrading the story is a big focus for RE4R. One really interesting quote can be found on the official site. Resident Evil 4 preserves the essence of the original game, while introducing modernized gameplay, a reimagined storyline, and vividly detailed graphics to make this the latest survival horror game where life and death, terror, and catharsis intersect. Now that sounds badass. The emphasis on reimagined storyline sticks out to me the most. I truly believe we're getting something deeper here, and I really hope most of it, like I said earlier, focuses on Leon's inner struggle with the parasite taking over his mind and body. RE2R did a fantastic job at modernizing and exploring story elements and creatures in a grounded way, and it was super enjoyable. RE3R, while a fun adventure cut way too short for its own good, did an alright job at exploring concepts that its original counter part presented, and RE7 and Village were an amazing duology of games, showing the progression from down-in-the-mud true survival horror to confident backs-against-the-wall action gameplay. I'm really hoping we get that level of faithful reimagining of RE2R, the stylish, fast-paced action of RE3R, and the experimentation of the new mainline games as kind of a melting pot of game design philosophy for RE4R. I'm so excited just thinking about what's in store for us, and it's funny because at first I wanted to see more of the game from this teaser trailer, but I'm still kinda in that mindset of imagining it all, like a crazy fangirl. Like what is El Gigante, Verdugo, or the Regenerators gonna look like? I hope the castle retains some of that gaudy design of the original game while making things dark. I hope the late game island still has Krauser's boss fight, U3, and some of that Rambo vibe of the original. I don't know, man. Whenever a new RE title gets announced, it's like Christmas for me. I have so much fun dreaming up what's gonna happen, and I hope you guys do too. That's what my channel's all about, and I'm so glad to see that the community is generally in a good place around this announcement. There's been so much talk about RE4 not needing a remake, and while I agree with that, it's just really nice to see the community coming together and enjoying this for what it is. And I'm so excited to finally get it in my hands and play it in like one sitting and have a great time. Let's just hope Dev1 listened to the feedback and downright backlash that came with RE3R. I have a feeling they will. RE4 is a big money maker for them, so they can't really screw this one up. You hear that guys? We do it once again for the third time. Oh my god. But if they do mess it up, I've got a suplex with their name on it. You hear me, Capcom? Don't mess it up. Hey guys, only nine more months until we get to return to the village and see cutie pie Ashley Graham in photorealistic detail. Shoutouts to Ella Freya, by the way. She's awesome. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and checking out my Patreon link down in the description. I'll be back very soon with a brand new Resident Evil retrospective for you guys. I think you're gonna love it. It's gonna be awesome. Alright, as always, thank you all for your support. I'll see you all later.